Alors, j'en suis où Ok, alors c'est pas tout à fait, tout à fait un direct, mais ça ira. Ça ira, ça ira. Un petit test. Hop, du chat. Salut Julien. Salut, salut Julien. Alors, hop. On en était où dans le tuto On en était là. Je cherche mon tuto. Thank you. Last than others, right, etc. So it's just adding in that diesel. You can also hold down control. Thing out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both my donut and my icing. I'm going to hit Shift D, and that's create in your modif. In fun, we are going to be. Uh, I mean, working with a donut should be fun enough. But uh, but this part is particularly fun. We're going to be making uh, both the donut and the icing on it look more shapely. So we're going to use sculpting to make this part look gloopy and like real icing. And it's a lot of fun. Um, so before we do the sculpting, the sculpting will uh, it'll work. But we only the only detail. Ouais, j'ai j'ai un projet pour la chaîne euh, que j'ai entamé il y a un peu plus de deux semaines. Et euh, j'arrive pas à faire exactement ce que je veux et du coup je faisais sur Illustrator et je me suis dit finalement euh, Blender je suis sûr que je peux je peux me débrouiller un petit peu euh, du coup je le fais sur Blender voilà j'avais quelques heures à, à tuer c'est rare en ce moment c'est très rare et euh, j'avais envie de faire ça euh, donc c'est mon premier tuto hein. vraiment j'ai découvert Blender euh, hier soir j'en ai fait trois heures j'ai fait la ce donut là je viens de faire les, les coulures et là, du coup, il faut le rendre un peu plus réaliste. Voilà où j'en suis actuellement. Icing on it look more shapely. En fait, euh, Julien, tu connais Et salut Mario au passage. We're gonna use sculpting to make this part look gloopy and like real icing, and it's a lot of fun. Um, So before we do the sculpting, the sculpting will uh, it'll work, but we only the only detail we have is what is available to us in edit mode. Like if we're sculpting on a donut, this is all the detail we have. So really, we want to have a lot more detail than what we've got currently. So um, over here in your modifier section, we've got the subdivision modifier, and there's a button we can apply it. And if we hit apply, it'll apply that detail to the to our donut. But before I do that, sachant que j'ai pas tout à fait la même version, les trucs sont un peu déplacés. Euh, ouais, absolument. Non, mais je vais regarder plein de... Là, c'est. En fait, j'ai regardé. Euh, C'était Balo, Balo, Balo Prisonnier, là, qui, qui a fait une vidéo. Genre, je fais 30 jours sur Blender. Puis je me suis dit, euh, allez, vas-y, je vais en faire un petit peu. Et en fait, j'ai un truc que je veux faire. Enfin, un truc. J'ai un projet que je veux faire. C'est pas si compliqué. Je sais que si je me mets correctement, en vrai, en deux semaines, c'est bon, quoi. C'est vraiment pas compliqué ce que je veux faire. Euh... Et du coup, a priori, les, les, les tutos les plus connus pour commencer, c'est le tuto du. Du donut de comment il s'appelle euh, de Blender Go. Et Mikol, c'est quoi C'est un français du coup So um, over here in your modifier section, we've got the subdivision modifier, and there's a button we can apply it. And if we hit apply, it'll apply that detail to the to our donut. But before I do that, it's a good idea to have a copy of what it is before you're going to apply it just in case you need to go back. Um Attends, mais je suis pas du tout même en lui en fait. Je suis bien dans ma subdivision. Render viewport. Je suis passé à 2. On change un, je mets OK render 2. OK TT3 OK. And I say this from like years of using Blender, like you know, you hit apply on something You can't go back, by the way. Like a modifier, it's it's there and you can revisit it at any time. But once it's applied, it's ah, oui, like it's done. So um, that's why <laughs> okay. I think it's a good idea to, well, to keep a copy of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both my donut and my icing. I'm going to hit Shift D, and that's created. Oh, 
If you see it snapping like this, by the way, that's because your uh, snapping tool is still turned on. So anyways, I, I have duplicated it and you can see up here, we've now got uh, two donuts and two icings. And on, I'm gonna select, whoops, select my donut and my icing, and I'm gonna hit M. So M is gonna move it to a collection. So collections are at the top here, we can see we've got a collection, just the default collection. So what I wanna do is I wanna move it to a new collection and then I'm gonna hide that collection. So, um, donut, my, my donut, 001 and whatever, donut icing. I don't know how to rename it. Il faut que je reprenne mes notes parce que je, je, en même temps je me fais un je me fais un, un Google Sheet euh, Google Doc plutôt avec tous les raccourcis et tout euh, parce que vraiment ouais, on peut pas s'en passer et le rename faut que je me remette dessus le rename oh j'ai oublié le rename je l'ai pas marqué le rename bah tant pis je l'ai pas marqué j'ai pas marqué hein. Pas marqué, pas marqué. Alors, euh, on va faire clic rename. Je sais plus. Bu donuts pour backup. Ok, et lui, je vais le cacher. Ok. Ouais, double clic, mais je, en fait, j'essaie d'apprendre vraiment tous les raccourcis. Je vais faire ça dans une nouvelle collection, comme ça, et je vais l'appeler ça. Archive. I just I call it archive just to keep it out of the way, and then I'll just I'll call this original, just in case I want to come back to them. And then I'm gonna uh, on this new collection here. I'm just gonna uncheck that box next to it. So now I've still got my donut and icing, but if I want to, I can yeah. access another. Check in case I want to come back to them. And then I'm gonna uh, on this new collection here. I'm just gonna uncheck that box next to it. So now I've still got my donut and icing, but if I want to, I can access another version de... of them. So that's pas just a way, of, you know, safety Merci. precaution for you. <laughs> okay, so with my donut here, select, this is the one that we're going to sculpt on first. Um, I'm going to hit apply on my subdivision surface. And there we go. We've got all this detail here. To... Um, I'm going to hit apply on my subdivision surface. And there we go. We've got all this detail here to work with. Okay, so with my donut here select, this is the one that we're going to sculpt on first. Um, I'm going to hit apply on my subdivision surface. And there we go. Ah, We've got all this detail donut, here. To work. Um, I'm going to hit apply on my subdivision surface. And there we go. We've got all this detail here to work with. So now, if I go to sculpting, so that along the top navigation bar there, sculpting, zoom in a bit. <laughs> um, along the top navigation bar there, sculpting, zoom in a bit. <laughs> um, now we've got this. So we are in sculpt mode, and uh, the the hotkey you should remember, which has been turned off for okay. some reason, there we go, um, is F. If you want to change the size of your brush, it is F. Um, and there's also like, okay, where's the other settings for your brush? So uh, <laughs> if for some reason it's disabled, I, I'm pretty sure it's like the future version of Blender will have it enabled by default. But if absolutely, Manu. F2, bien sûr, Julien, merci. Je vais le tester, mais je crois que c'est F2, hein, c'est ça. Non, c'est pas F2, euh, c'est F3, c'est pas F3. Tant pis. Tant pis. But if you right click one of these buttons here and then along the head, the future version of Blender will have it enabled by default. Enfin, non, pas la première fois. J ai, j ai, hier, j'ai commencé ça hier, hier soir. J'en ai fait. Euh, J'en ai fait 2h, 2h30, un truc comme ça, 2-3h. J'en suis là, euh, vous voyez. Peut-être pas, j'en suis à la part 5. À la part 5 du. du donut. Bold. But if you right click one of these buttons here, and then along the header, where it says header, just go show tool settings. On est là pour parler également. Hein. De toute façon, je ferai bien de retourner arrière. Si vous avez plein de questions, Pi Network ou Crypto ou n'importe Blender, peu importe. Hein. Euh, on est là, je suis disponible. Vous pouvez m'interrompre. Vous en voudrez pas. Yeah, and then along the header. Uh... <laughs> If for some reason it's disabled, okay, where's the other settings for your brush? So, uh, if for some reason it's disabled, I, I'm pretty sure it's like the future version of Blender will have it enabled by default. But if you right click one of these buttons here and then along the header where it says header, just go show tool settings, then you'll actually get the settings that really should be there from the start. So, I don't know why it's not there by default, but that's how you bring it in if you can't see it. 
Anyways, now that I've got this, yeah, I could change my radius there. Um, and I can also change my strength. Hey, thank you for the reminder, spider. It's always at the wrong time. Um, okay, now, if I was to just draw on my mesh, you can see that we are uh, sculpting. We're pulling parts of the mesh out. But you'll notice we're also pulling another part of the mesh out. The reason for that is that by default, X symmetry mirror is turned on. So it's useful if you're sculpting a face, but we're sculpting a donut, and that's very okay. annoying. So I'm turning that off. And now when I sculpt, you can see we're pulling that out. Now, if I was to go into uh, edit mode just to show you, it's pulled that out. That's exactly what it's doing right now. All it's doing is it's taking the mesh and it is deforming it in a way that's appropriate for sculpting. So um, you might wonder, well, what's the difference between sculpting and edit mode? I mean, not a lot. Like you could do this next step, like in you know edit mode and do proportional editing and all that kind of thing. But um, it's just different ways of working. Like some ways, especially when we do like you know the deforming of the the gloopy bits of the icing, it's just easier to do with sculpting. Now. In the case of our donut, what we're going to do is uh, we want to make it look like... Because basically the way donuts are made is they come out of a fryer. I actually filmed it, actually. I went to That's a donut shop and filmed it. It comes out of a fryer. It, like, it sits in uh, a deep fryer and it sits there bubbling and then they flip it over and then the other side. But basically the part that is like floating like along the level part of the donut is... Um, uh, it's uncooked. It's less cooked than the rest of it. So it's usually... Um, like the parts around it are sticking out a little bit more than the middle. So essentially, if I can find a good photo of it, this one, right there, you can kind of see it there. This might actually be a bagel. I don't know what the American bagel company is. I mean, it might be a bagel, I don't know. But basically like the more cooked it is, I believe the more um, it'll like build the, the yeast or whatever, right? It'll kind of ex like expand it a little bit more. Anyways, point is, is the part around the middle, I want to make it small. I want to make it shrunken oh, a little shit. bit. So, if I was to just draw, it's actually going to pull it out. But if I hold down control as I draw, you can see that it's actually pushing it eh? in. And Not that is what I want to do. So, I'm just going to go around it. Shrunken a little bit. So... If I was to just draw, it's actually going to pull it out. But if I hold down control... Oh, par contre, il a mis 115 là. Faire comme lui. Et il a mis 0, 263. 0, 263. 0, 263. 1, voilà. All. As I... It's actually going to pull it out. But if I hold down control as I draw, you can see that ah. it's actually pushing it in. And that is what I want to do. So I'm just going to go around it just like this. This isn't particularly fancy, but it does the job. Um, yeah. By the way, I'm doing this with a mouse, and I do have a stylus, but I'm doing it with a mouse because I know most people watching just have a mouse. A stylus will be immediately better for sculpting because you have pen pressure. And you can like taper off strokes just with ten pen pressure. Like it's so much better with a stylus. Um, je le fais un, on va mettre un peu moins de radius, un peu plus de force peut-être. Ok, un peu plus de radius peut-être. Non, c'est le radius qui va pas. On va mettre 50 et on va mettre. Euh, Peu moins de force quand même. Peu moins de force. Légèrement moins de force. Euh, 0,38. C'est déjà plus. J'ai des. Enfin, vraiment, j'ai des. J'ai des relents de. De logiciel. C'est dur à, à switcher. Moi j'utilise beaucoup After Effects. Et par exemple, pour me déplacer de vue, donc c'est la souris, clic gauche normal. Et en plus, c'est.. Euh, c'est euh, barre d'espace et du coup quand j'appuie sur barre d'espace ici bah, ça marche pas des masses ça marche pas des masses radio c'est peut-être encore un peu trop grand non allez ça passe so you know if you ça passe on va dire ça 
Ça passe, ça passe, on va dire. Get serious about sculpting or Blender at some point, it's probably a good investment. But I'm doing it with a mouse, so you can too. Okay, so that's okay. Um, but having a look at this, we need a little bit more detail. It's a little bit low res. So I'm going back to layout mode. I'm just gonna add another subsurf modifier. So I'll just add one here. Make sure. Uh, modifier. Ah, comment je sors de sculpting Comment je sors de sculpting Où oh, il est sorti du sculpting Layout Là. Ok, là je vais ajouter un solidify, c'est ça hein, qu'il a fait. Non, un subdivider. We need a little bit more detail. It's a little bit low res. So I'm going back to layout mode. I'm just gonna add another subsurf modifier. So I'll just add one. Here, make sure, when you apply it by the way, it'll apply whatever is in viewport subdivision, right? So um, it's just going to apply that. So I'm just going to hit apply and then. Port subdivision. De render. Right, so um, it's just going to apply that. So I'm just going to hit apply and there we go. Got a little bit more to play with now. Back to sculpt mode and. Ah, je suis en edit mode. Pardon. Ok. Aïe, ok. And away we go. I did that step deliberately, by the way, because I know, uh, you know, I, I want to show you like the thought process of uh, how you solve these sorts of problems. So, um, yeah, as you can see, pretty uh, pretty simple. Don't want to go too far, you know. By the way, the, the keyboard shortcuts like Shift F will actually be the strength. So if you don't want to have to keep going up there, you can just hit Shift F and you can control it there. And then F is the size of the brush. So I use F a lot, Shift F not so much, because it's a little weird to me, but um, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. We could also change So Yeah, uh, how you and away we go. I did that step deliberately, by the way, because I know, uh, you know, I, I want to show you like the thought process of uh, how you solve these sorts of problems. So, um, yeah, as you can see, pretty uh, pretty simple. Don't want to go too far, you know. By the way, the, the keyboard shortcuts like Shift F will actually be the strength. So if you don't want to have to keep going up there, you can just hit Shift F and you can control it there. And then F is the size of the brush. So I use F a lot, Shift F not so much, because it's a little weird to me, but um, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. We could also change to like a smooth brush, like if you go too far, you could kind of smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, let's try using Shift F, there we go. Um, yeah, you can kind of control it like that. Uh, but okay, so that is the donut. I might actually, just while I'm here, actually, let me have a look. I didn't even do this for my, um, my donut, but what does the inside of a donut look like? Nothing. Uh, it looks exact. It looks completely, perfectly round. Um, <laughs> well, you know, nothing's perfect. So I'm going to just like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to hold down control and I'm just going to like add a little bit of detail. Here. Oh, like, wait, wait. So wait, wait. Contre, ça va être un peu plus gonflé là. Hop, un peu plus gonflé. On va remonter un peu la strength. Pareil, pas mal. Some detail is better than no detail, right? Even if it's just like a tiny little bit, it's better than it just looking completely perfect because nothing is completely perfect in the real world. Okay, so the donut part is good. Now, we're gonna do uh, similar steps, but for the icing. So I'm going to apply my solidify modifier first. And then the next one is the now. We're gonna do uh, similar steps, but for the icing. So I'm going to apply my solidify modifier.
contre A pour apply. For the icing. So I'm going to apply my solidify modifier first. And then the next one is the subsurf modifier. Let me just unhide the rest of the mesh just in case that causes problems later on because it can in your sculpt mode. You won't be able to see it. Um, and the other thing, I'm just going to increase my subsurf modifier just to give myself a little bit more detail in the sculpting stage. So I'm applying that to level if it can in your sculpt mode. You won't be able to see it. Um, and the other thing, I'm just going to increase my subsurf modifier just to give myself a little bit more detail in the sculpting stage. So I'm applying that to level three, apply, and now the ouais. sculpting stage. So I'm applying that to level three. Viewport 3. Je suis déjà en viewport 3. Apply, and now this is the detail level that we have to work with. So I'm going to sculpt mode now. And, okay. and along my brushes here, the one I'm going to use is called Inflate. Inflate. Uh, quoi uh, sculpting. And this I'm going to use, ellipse, um, yeah, the clip start. I believe we did this. Yeah, we did this. In, um, yeah, the clip start. I believe. I believe we did this. Yeah, we did this in the previous tutorial, but changing the clip start, I believe, I guess there's a A different clip start for different modes um, but anyways so I'm changing that so I can get in close inflate will allow me to sculpt and what it's going to do is it's going to pull yeah it's going to almost like it's like sticking inside the mesh and it's like inflating it slightly and it's going to create a uh, like a dripping effect which is very very common for um, for droplets like you can see just along that edge there that's really hard to uh, hard to get there but basically wherever it's a better photo, maybe. Wherever the, the liquid builds up, like as gravity pulls it down, it, it's obviously gonna be more built up there. So essentially, I'm just doing a couple of clips. Click. Okay. Par contre, radius. Uh... Clicks, obviously clicks, not clips, to uh, to make it look a little bit gloopy. So one, two, three maybe, something like that. This is where you don't copy me exactly. You uh, you see what I'm doing and then you apply it to yours because, um, just a couple of clips, because your, your version is obviously gonna be different to mine. You're gonna have little droplets in different places. Um, so it's just a matter of picking the droplets and just sculpting a little bit of detail. Just make sure that the tip of it, you know, make it look like the weight of it, like it really is like, the ball of the, the the dripping icing is like at the head of it, at the very bottom of it, right? Salut, IT, Jeff. The inflate brush is really good for this. Comment um, ça va? Really C'est presque kawaii ici, IT, I'll do a little bit for this part here as well. It's pretty good. A little bit here, maybe. 
I hope I Maybe. I don't know. It's a little... It's a little bit weird. Yep. <laughs> um, and you just go along it. It's kind of relaxing. It's quite a fun step. I like this part. You just kind of imitate how liquid forms. Yeah, man. Hardcore. Cool. Cool stuff. Um... Cool, so that's about that. Now we can switch, of course, to the smooth step. If you go too far, you can like smooth something out if it looks a little bit odd, um, but that's okay. By the way, we will, the parts that are sticking yeah, out, don't worry about that, we'll go back to the edit and we'll, uh, we'll move those in, but for now it's okay. Oh, that part needs to be smoothed a bit. It looks a little bit odd, but that's cool. I also, I, I, I guess we forgot to do it for like the edit stage. We forgot to like kind of like do this inner part ring here as well. So actually while I was just preparing for this tutorial, I was like, let's see if I can actually fix it just in sculpt and just add a few like little dropply bits. And uh... Oh, but nice. Uh, uh, grab it, Eddie. que ce soit là où ça coule beaucoup ici pas que ça fasse comme ça là il n'y a pas beaucoup il faudrait que je le remonte à la limite là ça a bien coulé Pas mal, ça. And, uh, yeah, you kind of can, because like the inner part of a donut, it's not going to have like lots of liquid that's like going to be dribbling down or whatever, but it's going to have a little bit, like it's not going to be a perfectly clean edge. So I'm just using the grab brush and I'm just like pulling randomly around here, like so, like it's kind of like been pinched in a little bit. And then I'll also use like the inflate brush and I'll inflate like little bits of it maybe. Just like a little bit, just like running along the edge. And as I said, something is better than nothing. All right, that's pretty good. And then the only other thing we are gonna do is use draw mode with a small strength, 0.2 or something like that. Euh, là où j'ai dit que ça coulait bien, c'est là. Petite inflate un peu ici. Ah, pas ici du coup. <rire> Ah non, pas ici. C'est là que ça n'a pas trop coulé. Je vais déinflate un peu. Bon, on peut dire que c'est pas mal comme ça. Oula, cancel. Euh, pas de logo. Euh, pas de logo, euh, Wizlard. Euh, Wizlard, tu sais bien que c'est autre chose. J'ai déjà envoyé une photo, Wizlard, de ce que j'allais faire. Non, là, c'est le tuto. Là, c'est un tuto. Euh, c'est un des tutos les plus reconnus euh, pour commencer. I'm just gonna create a little bit of random... Dis tu sais très bien ce que je vais faire. Je n'en ai pas sous la main, mais... Tu connais, hein Voilà ce que je vais faire. Placement across my icing here. Ça, mon kawaii ici, il veut pas venir, hein. Non, pas mon kawaii ici, mon, euh, mon statut de validateur. 
Tu l'as fait toi, Wiza ton... ton kawaii ici Ah, je suis bloqué là. Ça ne veut pas venir. Quand ça veut pas, ça veut pas. Quand ça veut pas, ça veut pas. Yeah. Because we got the skull brush out, why not, right? C'est quoi le sculpt ah, euh, Le sculpt Ah ouais, tiens, pas bête. Euh, pas bête, pas bête, c'est mort. Euh, c'est un gros radius lui. Je vais pas voir si ça fait quelque chose. Si, ok. Je mets un. Hop. Pas mal ça. Euh, ouais, pareil. À, 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 adresse postale. Salut à Bronson. C'est ça. Aller adresse postale et remettre mon numéro de mon numéro de permis. Gone to the trouble of preparing the mesh so that we can sculpt on it. Might as well add in a little bit of detail because the real world, like I mean, as if icing could ever be perfectly just the right amount of mill, like point, uh, what was it two, twenty-five millimeters that we used for the uh, for the solidify modify? Like it's never going to be as perfect as that in the real world. So um, there's going to be parts that are going to have more icing, thicker icing, less than others, etc. So. It's just adding in that detail. You can also hold down control, of course, to go the other direction. And then if you go too far, you can smooth it out a little bit as well. This is, uh, you know, it's getting a painting sort of look to it. But that's kind of cool. It looks a little bit like icing. C'est quoi ça? C'est le smoothing? Ah oui, smoothing, ok. J'ai mis un peu trop de force dans le smoothing. T'as fait combien De vrai Ok. Un peu de, de sculpte ici. Ouais, pas mal, non Okay, so going back to layout mode. Mais je suis pas. Ouais, franchement, euh... je suis pas encore aussi devenu validateur, mais bon, pas trop de temps en ce moment, donc c'est pas gênant. Bah, c'est dommage parce que moi j'avais beaucoup de temps hier et aujourd'hui. Donc dommage. Voilà. C'est dommage, c'est dommage. Mais Tina Honnête, on a fait pas mal déjà, il en a fait plus de 80, je crois. Um, you'll see, you know, as I mentioned, you've got parts that are like sticking out. Obviously, that's not going to be like that for a. I mean, maybe if it was like frozen in time as the droplet fell, but it's uh, we want it to stick to the donut. So, in edit mode, we have a lot more vertices to play with, and this is, by the way, where it comes to like, as I mentioned, like you want to have as few vertices as possible whilst you're editing. This is what I mean. Like, this is really hard to control this mesh right now because there's so much going on. But as it turns out, we really just need to just like move that part in a little bit. So provided we have proportional editing turned on and we've got it set to smooth. If I... So provided we have proportional editing turned on and we've got it set to smooth. If I grab that little piece there, turn up my proportional editing and I pull that in, And also I'm going to use rotate, so R to rotate. Why is that turned off? It just randomly turns off the screencast tool so you can't see what I'm pressing. Pressing, um, which is annoying. So my apologies if sometimes I'm using stuff on here and the, the tool is turned off. It's just, uh, 
It's a little I mean, buggy. It's, about, it's, it's a great add-on, you know, props to whoever made it. It's very handy, but a little buggy. Um, so I'll just pull that in a little bit. There we go. Like that. So you just want to make it look like it's obviously hugging the donut. Like it's really part of the donut. And uh, yeah, just do that for the rest of it. We have gone over though, so we will do that. I will do that off camera. Just continue this for all of the droplets along the thing. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and join me in the next part as we uh, continue making the donut. I believe we're doing materials next. So click here and I will see you in the next video. All right, well, congratulations on making it thus far into the tutorial. Um, the mesh of the donut, like its shape, is pretty well finished. Um, now we can start talking about... Faut vraiment faire partout Oh non mais... Je suis un peu obligé en fait. Je suis un peu obligé. Ou c'est le moment où je mets mes lunettes parce que j'ai mal aux, aux yeux, hein. c'est ça. Hein. C'est forcément ça. Euh, tac tac tac. Si je prends un peu plus large. Ah Vous avez fait votre cas ici, euh, messieurs, dames Sur le chat, là Ça passe le cas ici Moi, je l'ai passé hier. Pour tout vous dire. Voilà. Et j'attends ma demande de devenir validateur, qu'elle soit acceptée, pour que je puisse euh, valider vos propres cas ici. Je 
chelou ça. C'est long de venir refermer un donut. Hein. Hop. Il a pas mal là. Il a pas mal là. Sauf ici quoi. Sauf ici. Voilà qui est mieux. C'est pas joli ça. Hein. C'est pas joli, c'est pas joli. Ça c'est mieux. Et ben moi ça me satisfait. Écoutez, ça me satisfait. Its shape is pretty well finished. Um, now we can start talking about. Uh, lighting and rendering. So everything we have done thus far has just been in sort of viewport mode, right? Like in this shaded, this is solid view viewport mode. Um, but when you actually create a final image uh, or an animation, it's actually going to be using a separate mode called rendered view mode. And that is where you actually determine how things look, like the, the color of things, create a final image. Uh, or an animation, it's actually going to be using a separate mode called rendered view mode. And that is where you actually determine how things look, like the, the color of things, where the light is, all that kind of thing. So that you can actually have a look at by clicking on that final little dot there, that's rendered view mode. Um, or by the way, a hotkey for switching between all these modes here is is a Z, and that'll bring up this pie menu here. So this is solid view, what we've always been looking at, um, and then that's rendered. We've also got two others which we haven't really used. We'll probably use them later on. But anyways, for now, we're gonna have a look at rendered view mode. Um, and this is rendered view mode, okay? So uh, things look a little different. Um, <laughs> it's not too much different, but a little bit different. One biggest thing is that there's light, right? There's an actual directional light, um, and we know that uh, that it's working because that's our light over there, right? Now, if we move this light in closer, uh, which we could do just by hitting G and sort of move things around, and I just realized this uh, screencast tool is turned off. Okay, good. Just keep that active. Uh, so if we move this light screencast tool is turned G and sort of move things around, and I just realized this uh, screencast tool is turned off. Okay, good. Just keep that active. Uh, so if we move this light in, just closer to our donut, like so. Um, you can see that as I move this around, that it's uh, the light and the shadow is reflected on that donut there. Um, okay, so let's let's make this scene a little more interesting because right now there's like the donut's not casting any shadow onto anything else because it's just a donut hovering in outer space basically. So let's add in a plane. Um, okay, so for some reason, by the way, my cursor, that little cursor is turned off. Uh, this, by the way, 
it's not important. But this drop down here is how you can determine the, the look of your viewport, if there's any thing. That little cursor is turned off. Uh, this, by the way, it's not important, but this drop down here is how you can determine the, the look of your viewport, if there's anything to turn on or off. Anyway, the 3D cursor, the, uh, and the reason the 3D cursor is important is that I'm gonna add a plane, and wherever the 3D cursor is, is where new objects get dropped. Um, and you can move your 3D cursor by shift right click, that'll change this 3D cursor, or just shift C will actually clear it and it'll put it in the center of your, your grid floor. Plane, and wherever the 3D cursor is, is where new objects get dropped. Um, and you can move your 3D cursor by shift right click, that'll change this 3D cursor, or just shift C will actually clear it and it'll put it in the center of your, your grid floor. Anyways, so I'm gonna add a plane, one thing at a time. Shift A uh, is that menu for adding new things, and we're gonna go for mesh, plane. And there we go, we have a plane. And I'm gonna je focus pas, on the plane pas, so pas. I can move around it, good. Um, okay, so I want, and it'll put it in the center of your, your grid floor. Anyways, so I'm gonna add a plane, one thing at a time. Shift A uh, is that menu for adding new things, and we're gonna go for mesh, plane. And there we go, we have a plane. And I'm gonna focus on the plane just so I can move around it, good. Um, okay, so I want my donut to obviously be sitting on the plane. Plane. And there we go, we have a plane. And I'm gonna focus on the plane just so I can move around. around it, good. Um, okay, so I want my donut to obviously be sitting on the plane, so it's like sitting on a countertop. Um, so we could, you know, grab my donut here and move it up, but then the icing doesn't come with it. And it's obviously very important that these two are linked. We could select them both by hitting shift, you know, and selecting them both like that. But let's save ourselves some time for the future as well and uh, link these two. So we do that by parenting it. Uh, so the way you parent things in Blender is you select first the object that is the child of a parent object, meaning like the one that's supposed to follow another object. So the icing first, then shift, click on the object which is gonna become the parent, the master object, and then I'm gonna hit control P for parent. And then I'm gonna select, uh, you can select object or object keep transform. I always use keep transform because sometimes you're working with lots of stuff. <laughs> click on the object which is gonna become the parent, the master object, and then I'm gonna hit Control P for parent. And then I'm gonna select, uh, you can select object or object keep transform. On the object which is gonna become the parent, the master object, and then I'm gonna hit like the one that's supposed to follow another object. So the icing first, then shift, click on the object which is gonna become the parent, the master object, and then I'm gonna hit Control P for parent. And then I'm gonna select uh, you can select object or object keep transform. I always use keep transform because sometimes you're working with lots of stuff. The first one doesn't do exactly what you'd expect. Keep transform always works, but basically that. Um, and then when you do that, if you move your donut, you will see that the icing comes with it, which is what we want. Nice. Uh, by the way, in your outliner up here where you've got the, the, the objects, when you parent something to another object, um, it actually, it looks as though it's vanished. Par contre, ma light, elle est dégueulasse. Hein. Voilà, c'est mieux ça. Vraiment, je peux plus malader dans les. Je peux plus malader dedans. Ok. 
de, de Mario Blender. Pas le choix, c'est pas le choix, hein, écoutez. Pourquoi je peux plus me balader dedans Mais je peux plus Je peux rotate Ah ouais, il est bloqué la main. Ah, Shift C, ok, ça m'a tout détruit, ok. Ok, j'ai compris. Je suis en mode caméra. Et quand je change ma vue Comment je change ma vue en mode caméra. Pourquoi je peux pas D'accord. Ok, et Ok, merci. Ouh, c'était dur. Vanish from the outliner, but it's actually just uh, basically that. Um, and then when you do that, if you move your donut, you will see that the icing comes with it. 
which is what we want. Nice. Uh, by the way, in your outliner up here, where you've got the, the, the objects, when you parent something to another object, um, it actually, it looks as though it's vanished from the outliner, but it's actually just underneath it now. So it's inside the outliner underneath that. Uh, by the way, in your, basically that. Um, and then when you do that, if you move your donut, you will see that the icing comes with it, which is what we want. Nice. Uh, by the way, in your outliner up here, where you've got the, the, the objects, when you parent something to another object, um, it actually, it looks as though it's vanished from the outliner, but it's actually just underneath it now. So it's inside the outliner underneath that object above it. Anyway, but now, now we've got that, now the donut, uh, Ben. Uh, the donut is the master, the master of all, the keeper of light and truth, and uh, the icing is following it. Good. All right, so. Let's just move this lamp in a little bit closer, like so. Okay. So, um, why is there no shadow? Why is the donut not casting shadow onto the plane there? Uh, well, we could, with our lamp here selected, we could check it out. Oh, contact shadows. Oh yeah, I've done this tutorial a couple of times. Contact shadows was turned on, but uh, turned off by. Uh, well, no shadow. So, the master, the master of all keeper of light and truth. Uh, you can select object or object keep transform. I always use keep transform because sometimes you're working with lots of stuff. The first one doesn't do exactly what you'd expect. Keep transform always works, but basically that. Um, and then when you do that, if you move your donut, you will see that the icing comes with it, which is what we want. Nice. Uh, by the way, in your outliner up here where you've got the The, the, the objects, when you parent something to another object, um, it actually, it looks as though it's vanished from the outliner, but it's actually just underneath it now. So it's inside the outliner underneath that object above it. Anyway, but now, now we've got that, now the donut, uh, the donut is the master, the master of all, the keeper of light and truth, and uh, the icing is following it. Good, all right, so. Let's just move this lamp in a little bit closer, like so. Okay. Oh, yeah, genre vraiment proche, okay. So, um, why is there no shadow? Why is the donut not casting a shadow onto the plane there? Uh, well, we could, with our lamp here selected, we could check it out. Oh, contact shadows. Oh yeah, I've done this tutorial a couple of times. Contact shadows was turned on, but uh, turned off by default. But anyways, um, it's using this light here, and uh, these are all the settings for the light. Oh, cool. I don't have all
Now, um, we could turn down the, the strength of this. We could change, you know, how things look. Because see, the, the shadow's not really... Ben, no, I don't know. Um, why is there no shadow? Why is the donut not casting shadow onto the plane there? Uh, well. Okay. We could, with our lamp here selected, we could check it out. Oh, contact shadows. Oh yeah, I've done this tutorial a couple of times. Contact shadows was turned on, but uh, turned off by default. But anyways, um, it's using this light here and uh, these are all the settings for the light. Now, um, we could turn down the, the strength of this. We could change, you know, how things look because see, the, the shadow's not really there. We could turn on contact shadows, which will give a little bit of shadow to it. And that's all well. And good but the thing is is that uh this mode that we're in right now this this render view mode is it's using a rendering engine to present this to us and the rendering engine that is defined by default in blender if we go to the rendering panel up here the render engine is ev which is a real-time rendering mode and it's really really fast renders like if you want to do like a long animation like a tv show or you're working on a really tight deadline uh ev is great because it's bon. Je m'arrête là euh, pour aujourd'hui. On se souhaite euh, une bonne journée. Ouais, c'est ça. Allez, on dégage.